When we think about the ocean, we tend to picture something timeless, an expanse that's endured for millions of years, teeming with life, pulsing with tides, balanced in ways we barely understand. Fish dart through coral reefs. Whales send songs across open water. It feels vast, stable, resilient. But in recent decades, researchers have been noticing a quiet transformation, subtle at first, but consistent across coastlines, regions, and species. Fish across the world are getting smaller, not just by a little, and not just in a few places. It's a trend that cuts across ecosystems and economies, from tropical shallows to Arctic seas, from artisanal fisheries to industrial trawlers. It's raising serious questions about the future of our marine life and the health of our planet. The most obvious driver of shrinking fish is also the most global, climate change. As ocean temperatures rise, fish are increasingly struggling to grow as large as they once did. This isn't just about food supply or habitat, it's about biology. Fish are ectothermic, cold-blooded, meaning their body temperature and metabolism are controlled by the environment. In warmer water, their metabolism speeds up. They require more oxygen to function. But here's the catch. Warmer water holds less oxygen. So as demand goes up, supply goes down, and fish have to adapt. One way to do that is by staying smaller. Smaller bodies require less oxygen. Smaller fish can survive in lower oxygen requirements. This phenomenon, called the gill oxygen limitation theory, helps explain why fish size is decreasing, even in the absence of overfishing or pollution. In some species, average adult size has already dropped by 15 to 30% over the last few decades. If temperatures continue to rise, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change projects that fish size could decline globally by up to 25% by the end of the century. But warming isn't the only culprit. Human fishing practices have become another powerful evolutionary force, changing not just how many fish are in the sea, but what kinds survive. In most commercial fisheries, larger fish are more likely to be caught. Whether by size-selective nets or legal regulations that prevent taking fish below a certain length, bigger individuals are disproportionately removed from the gene pool. Over time, this creates a kind of artificial selection, rewarding fish that mature earlier, reproduce younger, and don't grow as large. Essentially, we're breeding smaller fish. A 2002 study on North Atlantic cod showed that in just a few decades of intense fishing pressure, the average maturation age and size of cod had dropped significantly, even after fishing slowed. And unlike temperature-driven changes, these are often irreversible in human timescales. Evolution doesn't work on a timer. Once you push a species towards a certain trait, especially across generations, bouncing back isn't guaranteed. You might be thinking, what's the big deal? Smaller fish are still fish, right? But shrinking fish isn't just a cosmetic issue. It changes the way entire food webs function. Many marine animals, from seabirds to seals to larger predatory fish, rely on nutrient-rich, fatty fish to survive. Smaller fish mean fewer calories per catch. Some animals must hunt more to meet the same energy needs. Others may switch prey, triggering ripple effects across the ecosystem. In coral reefs, for instance, herbivorous fish help keep algae in check. If these fish get smaller or disappear, algae can smother corals and degrade the entire reef system. Even fish eggs and larvae are affected. Smaller adults produce fewer and lower quality offspring, meaning populations are not just smaller, but also more vulnerable to collapse. The consequences aren't limited to the sea. Around 3 billion people depend on fish as a primary source of protein, particularly in coastal and island nations. Smaller fish mean lower yields, less nutritional value, and reduced food security. For communities that rely on fishing for income, the economic fallout can be just as dire. Fisheries may bring in fewer high-value fish, forcing boats to go out further, stay out longer, or take greater ecological risks just to stay afloat. It's a downward spiral. Smaller fish, fewer fish, more pressure, even And all of this is happening while global demand for seafood is still increasing. Let's look at a few real-world examples. In the North Sea, Atlantic cod, haddock, and plaice have all shown significant declines in size over the past 40 years, coinciding with both warming and intensive trawl. In Lake Tanganyika, one of Africa's most biodiverse freshwater ecosystems, fish size and abundance have been falling since the late 1970s, largely due to rising water temperatures and stratification, which reduces oxygen availability. In Australia's Great Barrier Reef, Researchers have found that coral reef fish exposed to elevated carbon dioxide levels and warmer water 
grow more slowly and often display impaired behavior, making them easier prey. The trend is not isolated, it's global, and it's accelerating. There's no single solution to fish shrinkage, but there are pathways to reduce the damage. Sustainable fisheries management is key. That means not just setting quotas, but rethinking how we harvest, limiting size selective practices, protecting breeding grounds, and creating marine reserves where ecosystems can recover. Climate mitigation remains essential. Reducing greenhouse gas emissions is still the only way to slow warming oceans and preserve the oxygen balance marine life depends on. Consumer behavior plays a role too. Supporting traceable, sustainably caught seafood reduces pressure on overfished species and helps shift industry incentives. But more than anything, we need to shift our mindset to stop treating the ocean as an endless pantry and start seeing it as a living system with limits. Fish getting smaller might sound like a niche problem, but in truth, it's a microcosm of a larger story. A story about how warming, extraction, and short-sighted management are pushing natural systems beyond what they evolved to handle. A story about feedback loops we can't always see until it's too late. When we look beneath the waves, we're not just watching animals adapt, we're watching ecosystems respond. And the signals from coral bleaching to plankton shifts to shrinking fish are all telling us the same thing. The ocean is changing faster than we thought and more deeply than we understood. At Forevergreen, we believe the best way to protect our planet is to understand it clearly, honestly, and in depth. If this story made you think differently about the ocean, subscribe to the channel and share this video with someone who needs to see it. And if you want to support the work we do, join our exclusive YouTube community, where we dive deeper into topics like this, host live Q&As, and give early access to new content. Because the more we understand these changes, the better chance we have to change course.